Today I have two cottage core late summer DIYs. I'm teaming up with a very talented Lisa Marie from Living My Best Life with Lisa Marie. This is Brandy and this is making it my own. We're going to start off with one of these floral blocks. You can get them from the Dollar Tree. I have some thrifted greenery. And this is sort of a fall colored greenery. I have some pigs that were thrifted. Some little daisies and some sunflowers. A little pick from the Dollar Tree. An embroidery hoop. And I'm just going to take my rotary cutter and just start slicing through with the plastic on to keep it a little bit cleaner. It's all going to come off in a moment. Once I get my mark all the way around, I'm going to take my metal ruler and of course after removing the plastic, I'm just going to slice right through that. Then I'm going to take the two blocks and put them side by side and push them down onto this wooden embroidery hoop. This is going to put a little trench or a little mark in the back. Ideally, I'll turn it over and press a little bit harder. And then in order to get this to stick, I'm going to put some glue along the back. A good bit. It's going to have a lot of weight from the flowers that are going to be on it. And I'm just going to take some scrap paper and put that on the back and just use it as a bandage. Then I'm going to take some floral wire, wrap around one side. You don't have to squeeze this too tightly. You don't want to cut into that foam any further than you already have. And you're just going to make a little knot there on the end. Twist it, lay that down so you don't poke yourself. Wrap it around to the end and back around. Put those two pieces of the ends together and then lay those flat. You can cut them down if you need to. So I'm going to start greening this and I'm going to just use my clippers and start cutting off these all the way down to the base. These come in a variety of lengths, so I've got some shorter ones, some taller ones, some that are a little bit thicker. And I'm just going to start placing those around on the sides. This is going to be, I guess you could call it a half wreath. It's not going to go all the way around. Most of the florals are going to be on the bottom half or the bottom three quarters of the wreath. I'm going to start placing them around kind of at a slant there in the sides and then build upward. Place some of them in the front so that you have a little bit of extra in the front to cover up your greenery. Keep applying those in there. You have that wire so that kind of helps hold them in place too. Gives them a little extra support. And I'm putting this, these in at an angle and facing either to the right or to the left. We won't have any coming straight up. That's going to be where we're going to put our flowers. So I'm going to cut this little remnant of a pick and just randomly put these in. These are not going to be in a pattern because there are three so I can't evenly put them on the sides. And you will see me moving some things around in this wreath. I do this a lot when I do floral arrangements. I put things down and then if I don't like the way it's looking, I just move it. You can do the same thing. You gotta get it where it looks good to you, how it feels balanced and good to you. So I noticed that some of them were just too long, which was making it look too heavy. So I just pulled it out, give it a little trim to some of those. Push your greenery up just like when you are making a flower arrangement you can push your greenery up toward the flower and then trim them down you'll see me do that with these little flowers I'm just gonna push these up and trim it off then I'm going to start putting in the flowers again with this wreath there's no particular pattern I try to be balanced when I do arranging but you know with cottage core and this my spin on the cottage core is this kind of a funky 70s vibe where there's a lot of mushrooms and greens and golds and those types of colors and that kind of a wild look 
So I'm just gonna keep filling it out around the greenery. I'm starting, of course, on the outsides with the florals, just like I did with the greens. And I'm just gonna work my way inward and then upward. And you can see kind of how I'm doing this here. And if you have a, a, um, a process that works better for you, feel free to do it that way. You can leave some a little long, cut some a little bit shorter, like you would see them out in nature. So who was around in the 70s? Any of you guys around in the 70s? I know you were, because I know that most of my viewers are actually over 45 years old. Okay, so now I'm gonna take these big, beautiful sunflowers that were thrifted and just place those here and there. I'm not gonna do this you know, in a perfect pattern, like I said before, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna, see I've moved the one off the top, I'm gonna put it over here on the side. I don't want it to look too planned out. One in the middle. And then, another thing that you can do is if you have any florals that still have greenery on them, push that greenery up to the top, even if the flower is gone. You know how sometimes we get them at Dollar Tree and we're missing pieces? Cut that piece off and use the greenery on the pick. You can still use it. Look at these beauties that came from Dollar Tree. These are gorgeous. Amaranthus, is that what it said? I'm just gonna cut these off. Add those in here. This kind of reminds me of like the trolls from way back. You know, the garden gnomes and the trolls from way, way back. The coloring. And it just looks like it could be on a tree stump somewhere. You know, the little fairy house underneath it. Oh, I just love it. I know with cottage core, um, some cottage core decor, you see a lot of pastels and English garden type things, but you also have that woody mystical feel. And that's what draws me in. You know, I'm still at the heart of everything, uh, a lover of all things rustic. So, um, yeah, this just really feels like, a, if I could call it rustic cottage core, that's how it feels to me. I almost expect to see a little creature peeking out from underneath these flowers. A little frog on a toadstool. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so you know these are plastic and they're on wire, which is bendable. Move your things around, put them where you want them and how you like them. And that's what I'm doing here. Just kind of fidgeting around a little bit and get them exactly where I want them. And so I decided I wanted to add a couple little extras and I had some, a couple of extra pieces of, I think these are mini moms and they're from last year from Dollar Tree. And I wanted to just add that in a little bit too. just here and there. I don't know why, but Bob Ross is just really popping in to my head right now. His little, his little brown happy afro. I'm really thinking about him right now. This could very well be something that he would paint. Did y'all watch Bob Ross on PBS when you were young? Because I sure did. Yep. Kids think that they found something new when they, they talk about listening to how soothing and calm his voice is. They just don't know. We're so familiar with Bob. Okay, and then we're just going to keep going. Again, like I said before, if there's something in there that you don't like where it's at, it doesn't look right, you look at it from all angles, take it out. Move it. We didn't glue anything in in our florals in here, so you can move it. This is how it looks. What do you think about this? Is this a little too wild for you? Or do you really, are you really feeling the vibes from this? Because I'm certainly, I'm certainly feeling it. I mean, this is, I love it. Follow me on my social media, guys. Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. On to the next one. And if mushroom doesn't say cottagecore, I don't know what does. 
we're gonna do mushroom arrangement in a little picnic basket. So we're gonna use some floral wire, we're gonna use some thrifted greenery, some wood shreds, we're going to use some of these little thrifted plastic old crusty mushrooms. This is a piece of foam that came off of something else that I just saved. And here is a mini picnic basket. Is that not the cutest thing? Came from the thrift store. It's not perfect, but it's perfect for me. These are some vines that dried in my yard that I pulled down and clipped off. I've had them for about a year and I've used them in several arrangements. Just gonna get the dust off of here and I'm going to wire the base. Why are we wiring the base? Because we need something to hold our foam down. I don't want to ruin this basket. I want to have the ability to use it over again. So I am just going to use my wires. Push up through the bottom. Give it enough space in there so that I can lay my foam down. And it will hold my foam. Just going to pull it, lay it out. Going to do the same thing for the other side. Put my foam in here. Wrap it around. You can cut your wire if you want. You can trim it down or you can just do like I did, twist it firmly down and then press it down. It's not gonna be in the way. Same thing on this side. Twisting, twisting, twisting and then laying it over. And then you can see here, it is very securely in place. All right, so now we're gonna put this I can't even call it raffia. It's it's wood. It's like wood shavings. I don't know any other way to explain it. But this is going to be the base and help cover up our foam. It's going to look more natural on the bottom. I'm pushing my greenery up a tad so that I can start trimming it off. And then I'm going to go down between my branches and cut these into shorter pieces. And look at that. They look like they came that way. You can't tell. If you're careful about where you cut it, you can fix it to make it look as though it was actually meant to be two pieces. Then we're gonna have to find a way to get these mushrooms to attach. So I think a pick in the bottom from another arrangement would work. Excuse my out of focusness here. We're gonna do that to each one of those mushrooms and let them cool and dry. And while they're doing that, we're gonna start putting down our picks in the basket. I've just went ahead and went to the corners and on the outsides to hold down this base of this um, shred that I have here. After I get those placed around, I'll start adding some mushrooms here and there. Mushrooms generally, uh, similar mushrooms can go, grow in like a fairy circle. Um, if you've ever seen those, those are really, those are really pretty and, and they really, um, I don't know, it's something to look at. It's interesting how they come up and why they come up. If you've never heard, heard of a fairy circle, you should look that up. Place those down. I've bunched those in the corner together, like they're sitting on a, a puddle of fresh rain. And then I've put another type of pick in here. These are dried, or they appear dried. They're not actually dried. These are also thrifted, and I've had those for years. I've used them in so many arrangements for late summer and fall. Just love them. We're gonna keep pressing these down pull those mushrooms back up if they start looking like they're too sunken just like we're gonna do with this one that has the little green bits on it pull that back up just a tad give it some sunlight and just keep going like I always say just like I said with the other one turn it from side to side look at it from all angles make sure it's how you want it to be how you imagine it to be now I'm gonna go back in here with these little curly, wispy pieces and I'm gonna add them here and there. I think they just kind of, they add to the whimsy. And I'm gonna add in any little extra picks that I have to fill in any bare spots. Try to keep the taller ones on the top parts and the smaller ones on the near the outside of the basket. simple enough right and you can get these dried vines out of your yard you could probably buy them actually from 
a craft store if you wanted to. You just look for those probably in the fall and get some something similar to that. Now I'm going to cut a couple of pieces of this same wire so that I can hold the back of the basket up. I'm just going to make a little fish hook, weave it through this little section here, and then twist it around. Then I'm going to push it through a section on the side and twist it around. See, I'm just kind of going through that weave, pulling it, and twisting it around the wire that's already there. That's going to give it a little hinge almost so that the lid doesn't fall backwards. It'll stay upright. I'm going to do the same thing here. I had a little struggle on this side, not sure what I was doing differently, but I got it. Twist it around there. Then you're going to, after you get that twisted securely, you're going to just go down to the bottom, same thing, feed it through the side, and then I just wound it the leftovers in the back underneath. If anything falls off, not a big deal, a little bit of glue, stick it back on. It's plastic, not gonna hurt anything. Look at this. Is this not perfect? Oh, this is screaming cottage core to me. 70s cottage core. It is definitely what I'm going to call my rustic cottage core. What do you think about this? I really, really love it. And here is the wreath also. These two pieces complement each other. I think they would look wonderful displayed this time of year, even on into the fall if you wanted to do it that way. I know that Lisa has something wonderful on her channel for you to watch so you be sure that you check out the link and you go visit her channel and see what she has. Is this something you would do? Are you into cottage core? Have you heard of cottage core before? What are your thoughts? Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.